Hello, everybody. This is Noah and John, and we are from Urban Digs, and it is Monday, so you're going to get your Brooklyn Weekly Market Update. John, let's get right to it. The Brooklyn listing season has begun. I'm seeing an uptick in supply, 3,283 things. Show me that chart. Yeah, it's up 5% or so on the week, Noah. We were close to breaking that 3,000 number. It didn't quite happen. It looks like there's a breath of fresh air here for Brooklyn Supply. Yeah, this is what buyers are waiting for. It's been a while since we saw a supply tick up the other way. Let's see how far and how deep it goes and how long it lasts. But in the meantime, let's take a look at something that is not turning around just yet. It is still falling. Brooklyn demand, pending sales, 2,370 things. Johnny, show me that chart. Yeah, and that it looks like the trend may be changing. It's way too early to tell. We're seeing a sort of a, a, a positive 0.2% increase on the week. Um, but again, we probably still have another couple of weeks of, of lower demand as it takes time for those buyers to sign those contracts. So, you know, things are changing on the Brooklyn demand side, but just it's not quite clear which way yet. Yeah, it looks like the slope of the deceleration may be changing a little bit. So like, you know, the worst of the decline is over there. Um, but you know what, you know, you take into account pending sales dropping and you take into account supply was dropping and you look at this market pulse in Brooklyn and, you know, e even... As a buyer looking at this market and looking at what's going on in outside markets and looking at the interest rate change and all that, where's my leverage? Where Where is that sharp correction down? I mean, Manhattan kind of had it and you could feel it. I don't see it in Brooklyn. I, I'm not saying that this market didn't ease up a little bit and the leverage did fall a little bit back down towards buyers. It did. And you could see the two points that we're pointing out here at the peak. But it's just not yet into that neutral zone. And I'm not sure there's any panic or fear that will cause sellers to hit a, a gap down bid. No, I certainly don't think that. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that supply in Brooklyn has been extremely limited and declining over the last several months. I mean, it's not as yeah. if we saw a wave of supply hit Brooklyn at the same time we saw the contract sign numbers fall off a cliff. In fact, the, you know, the buyers have been out and they've been clamoring for Brooklyn property. So at a lower pace, but still, you know, when you look at that net new listings, right? I mean, it's the the idea is that there's just barely enough to go around. So that's that's kind of yeah. to me what's keeping market polls where it is and keeping Brooklyn in more of the seller's market territory. Yeah, and you can see right over here, if I hover, you can see right around where that turnaround point is, right? It's right around October. So we do fall during September, we get to October. So let's see where this goes. Um, let's shift towards the weeklies. We love looking at the weeklies here on Urban Digs. You could see that pop in weekly supply right there, Johnny. 272 things, but is it as big as it should be? Johnny, show me that chart. Yeah, so if you just look at the percentage change week over week, right, it's 103%. That's pretty phenomenal. But, you know, zoom out, look at those lines. I mean, th those lines from 2020, 2021, those are over 400. So we're, we're half of what we could have had, you know, compared to a year ago. So again, you know, going back to that market pulse, I think this is one of the things that's, that's supporting it is that the supply numbers are just not coming in at the pace that you would expect them to. Right. So that's why we like to look year over year and kind of filter out that seasonality a little bit. Um, and see whether or not we're at a high level. Are we coming in high? Are we coming in hot? Are we coming in light? So it looks like right now we're coming in a bit light. Um, we'll keep an eye on that. I know buyers want to see that number go up. But I'll tell you one thing, one thing that's not coming in high at all is that contract sign number. Look at 95. I know it's supposed to go down, but that hasn't been below 100 in a while. Johnny, show me that chart. Yeah, well, this is reflecting uh, last week, which was Labor Day week. So we're missing a you know, few days for that. Um, still down 28% to the week before. And uh, Noah, I still think we're going to have a few sort of slower weeks, maybe not in the 95 level below 100, but, you know, maybe yeah. August levels, 130s, 120s, somewhere in there as we get the get those buyers out, get them signing the contracts. And then end of September, early October, I do expect this number to start ticking up. But again, right. you know, that that contract sign pace, even though it's lower, you know, go back to what that weekly supply was, right? And that will, that one pop, which same in Manhattan, you get the pop and then it kind of fades from that pop. And if our pop is half of what it normally yeah. is, this is going to support the market pulse rather than hurt it yeah i see what you're saying that 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 first listing wave is usually the biggest wave and then afterwards the waves successive are kind of smaller so if that yeah. that first listing wave is coming in half the normal height then it's like okay what are the other waves going to be like very interesting to look at johnny um and yeah i expect this contract sign number to to stay here or fall lower and i'm not going to interpret that as a as a decline in and in, in leverage or anything because that's what it's supposed to do um seasonality Let's shift on to um, listing discount in Brooklyn. We're looking at when these deals were signed into contract and what was the negotiability and was that negotiability from the original ask in black, from the last ask in orange. And it's, it's a great chart 
for both buyers and sellers to kind of see where the market is. And when I look, you know, not only do I, I get information from the 2%, right? And that's telling me something right there, but it's, it's more helpful to take a look at where it came from and take a look at March, April, and May. Brooklyn held on really, really, really for a longer time than Manhattan. And median 0% for three months. I mean, that's half above, half below, Johnny, and then right up to 2%. Yeah. And, you know, the interesting thing is, no, when we take a look at, we take a sneak peek at what the qu third quarter reports for Brooklyn are going to look like. Prices are down barely, right? Maybe two to 3%. And you know, yes, it's an early look, but still, I mean, this is reflecting what we're seeing in the negotiability charts here, right? So you went from basically sellers getting their entire ass to getting 98% of their ass. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not crashing. Um, I don't know if we're actively falling. I think um, much like Manhattan, I think Brooklyn has did its version of a shift, um, clearly not nearly as notable as Manhattan, and it's found its way and and either um, either you accept it or you don't. And if you don't, then you're not really a market participant right now and until you decide to to come to where the market is. So we'll just keep an eye on this. Again, we like either we go up from here, we go down from here, or we kind of stay in a seasonal range. And after we just experienced a year and a half of parabolic activity, just staying in the seasonal range, I mean, that that sounds like something that's a, a big possibility to make, Johnny. Um, right. And it sounds like, and honestly, no, that's exactly what you want to have. You want to you want to stay within these seasonal norms because that's it, it frames people's expectations. When you start going out of the, yeah. the realm of expectations, then you have to worry about, well, not, not only you have to worry about what's happening in the market, you have to worry about how people are reacting to the market. So yeah. As long as we can manage expectations with historical data, I think that's a good thing for everybody. Yeah, I, I will take a stable, a stable, uh, a grind higher over longer term than boom and bust cycles all day long time. Yeah. John Walkup, thank you for pulling up all of that data for everyone else to see. I am Noah Rosenblatt. We are both from Urban Digs. Um, if you guys got questions, we got answers. Please visit our forum right down here. If you want any of the reports that John whipped up, they're going to be right over here. If you've never used Urban Digs before, give it a try. It's free for two weeks. Other than that, this has been your Brooklyn Weekly Market Update, and we'll catch you next time.